Hi guys and welcome back to another Darkfold tutorial. Today we're doing the falling button slash image projection as you can see in the example here. Uh, I remember seeing something like this when I first started doing Blender and uh, it was on a demo reel and I never found out how to do it so I thought I'd share with you today how I did it. So the first thing you want to do is start by modeling an object. It can be a button, it can be a coin, it can be poke chips, it can be anything you want. So I'm going to do um, start off by making a button. So I'm going to add a circle here. Extrude, extrude it again, and scale it in, and we'll add a mirror modifier. Then with this edge selected here, I'm going to press F to create a face. If you've not used a boolean modifier before, it's very simple. We're just going to add in a cylinder, scale up a bit, and scale it down. Okay. So when you're happy with that, just put it into position, tab into edit mode. Shift D to duplicate it, and then G on the X, and then grab them both, Shift Duplicate on the Y, and there you go. So we need to uh, name this so we can find it. Select the button, and then choose the modifier boolean. And then over here in object, we need to choose the object, or you can choose the, uh, the dropper, the picker, and choose whichever you want, and change this to union. Now we can apply that and delete this object, and you've got your button. It's very simple, so we need to just add a bit more uh, detail to it. Let's scale this out a bit. Okay, so let's just uh, select all these. And you want to make sure you remove doubles, make sure there's no double vertices, and then smooth. If it looks like this, don't worry, what we need to do is just add another modifier. Come over here to Edge Split, and then change the angle to whatever works for you. I'm just going to add a bit more detail to this. Scale it down. Every time you scale it down, make sure you press Ctrl A to apply the scale. I'm going to add in a uh, material now just as a placeholder. So, what we're going to do is select next to color here, you want to select image texture because we're going to put, be putting an image on it depending on what you want to use. Okay, so yeah, if you want to unwrap your, um, your object depending on how complex it is, I guess you should do that now. For the example I'm doing, you don't really need to, but I'm just going to show you how you do that. So you just press Ctrl and E with any edge selected, and then you mark sharp, mark seam. So select the edge you want, press Ctrl E, and then mark seam. But make sure you only unwrap what you need to. See here, these edges don't need to be unwrapped, so I'm just going to deselect these. Again, for this example, we don't really need to unwrap it, but uh, it's always good practice getting the um, routine of doing so especially when the objects are very complex. Okay, so yeah, scale it down a bit more. And then when you're in top view, press Control alt number pad 0 and you want your camera to be quite high up. And then we want the object to be behind the camera so it falls down. Okay, so make sure you've got the middle selected and now start modeling uh, an object for the coins to land in. So I'm just going to quickly model uh, maybe a box. Very simple, so I will speed it up. Yeah, make sure as you put as much detail as you want into the creating of the box or whatever you're going to make the coins or whatever you're using to fall into. It could just be a plane, could be um, anything you want really. But the more detail you put in it, the better the overall shot will be. Okay, so just with a few little details here, I will come back later on and put a bit more detail into it. But for now that should work. So come over here and we want to select rigid body. And as it is now, if you press control, uh, Alt and A, it'll just fall through the, uh, the floor, if there was a floor there. So we need to select that as passive, as the type, so that stays in place. We also want to change the shape to mesh, and that's very important we do so. Otherwise the coins or whatever you're using won't work the way we need it to. So make sure your object is also rigid body. And we'll see how it works by pressing Alt A. Okay, it kind of works, but it goes through the um, through the mesh. So what we need to do is a, there's a couple of things we can do. First, we just need to increase this bottom bit here. So we just lift it up. That can help a bit. Okay, 
Also what you want to do is come to the settings over here with the box selected and you want the sensitivity, you can increase and decrease the sensitivity, that's how close it will be. Oh, well that's actually gone through the box so that's what we need to do is change the sensitivity a bit more. So it's very um, fine details or very fine movements you need to do so I'm going to 0.25. Yeah and that seems to work fine so very small increments um, can work. Okay, so that's the basics of it. What we need to do now is create a lot more of them. I want to make sure I um, add a floor plane as well because I want some of the coins or some of the, the, um, the buttons to fall over and spill out. Again, make sure that has a rigid body if you do want them to fall out and make sure it's passive and the rest of the, the uh, settings are fine. Okay, now so what we need to do is add more of these coins, uh, sorry, more of these buttons. So what we can do, just make sure you've removed the doubles if I didn't already tell you to do so. And if it looks like this, because you shouldn't apply the edge split. So if you did, that's what the problem I did. So yeah, don't apply the edge split. Always keep that. Okay, so now we can create some more of these. So the easiest way to do it, rather than just duplicating a lot of them, is we add a modifier, add an array. And just move this a little bit on here just to spread them, add 25. So if they fell down now, they'd spill out of the box. So we want them all to be in the box. I'm just gonna reduce this amount here. Okay, looks fine to me. So I'm gonna shift duplicate this, because each stack is 25, so say about 100 for now. Then you wanna um, move them over here and give them a rotation, a bit of a random rotation. It will help a little bit later on. Okay, so if you press Alt A now, this is what's happening, and that's obviously not good. So we need to apply the arrays. So with each of these stacks, go and apply them, but make sure you leave the edge split. Okay, so what we need to do now is tab into edit mode, and if you press P, and then select by loose parts. And it's important that you um, make sure the doubles are removed, otherwise when you press Alt and A, uh, it will all fall apart and things will mess up so you know you've done it wrong. So yeah, make sure you separate by loose parts and as long as everything's fine, um, yeah, this should work, no problem. So what we're going to do now is I want to make sure you set the origin for them, otherwise when they fall, they won't fall with their own origin. So you want to spacebar, set origin, origin to geometry. So now all we need to do is create like a funnel to um, make them fall down and collide because at the moment they won't collide that well so yeah make you make yourself a little funnel doesn't matter what you, how you do it it's not going to be seen by the camera so something like this would should work fine now we need to make sure that's a rigid body as well and passive and again make sure that's mesh is the shape so now when you press alt a most of the um, the buttons collide with the funnel so what we need to do, we need to tweak it a little bit more. If we look very closely, we see some of them actually fall through. And there's a number of reasons why that does that. And um, we can change that in a second. Okay, so let's first find the ones that fall right through. So if we scrub through here slowly, you can see this, them long line of them, they go straight through. And the reason why that does that is because they're facing very flat on. The, the, I don't know why Blender does that. Maybe it's a bug. Um, I don't know, but it's, if they face straight on, they won't work. So I'm going to select all these and go back to the beginning and then give them a different start point. So let's just move them over here so they should collide a bit more now. There you go, that look, already looks a bit better. So you just do a bit more tweaking. You see some here, they did the same thing. Okay, so what we can do is give all these a bit of uh, random started points and also random rotations. I'm going to hide that and go through each one of these and just press R to rotate it slightly. And this will definitely help a lot when they collide with each other and when they collide with the funnel. So I'm going to speed through this because it is very <laughs> repetitive. But the uh, the more rotation you put on it, the better they look. And you won't get any falling through the, the mesh. Make sure you switch to a different angle as well, give them even more of a rotation. Okay, so we press Alt A now. That's definitely a lot better. Only some of them fall through. Again, we, we can fix that. But by looking at them, they seem to bounce a bit too much. 
when they hit the box. So we can change that as well. So select the box and then come hit a friction. Just increase that for as much as you want. Just give it a try again. Yeah, that seems to work fine. There's one there clipping through the <laughs> through the mesh. So what we can do is select this edge here and bring it up a bit. Okay. So try that again. That seems to work fine. They don't seem to bounce as much as they did before, so it looks good. Maybe there's not enough of them there, we need to add some more. Let's come to the world settings here, and down to the rigid body cache, and we want to bake all dynamics for now. We can add some more buttons later on, but for now we're just going to see how that looks. Okay, so now let's do the texture for them. So if we select these two over here, one is your node window, your node editor, and what we're going to do is add a mix. Add a gloss to the image to the material we already made. Now we're going to add in the object, the image. I'm using the um, Manchester United logo since that's my favourite football team. <laughs> to anyone out there who's not from England, it's probably soccer. But we're going to map this image onto each one of these coins. So that's pre pretty simple to do. Uh, can be repetitive depending on how many you've got. So we're going to tab into edit mode, press U to unwrap, and there we go, it starts appearing straight away. So we select the next one, tab into edit mode, select all of them, press U to unwrap, project from view. And then you just keep doing that for all the coins that you've got on there, coins, buttons, whatever you're using. And make sure you do the ones underneath as well, so hide, once you've done one, press H to hide, and then do the coin, you know, the, coin or the object underneath. So when they fall, they'll all fill in together and it'll look good. Okay, so you can already see it working there. Uh, we just need a lot more coins, which is very simple to do. Coins, buttons, just need a lot more buttons. Okay, so make sure you um, bake it. There you go, it looks a lot better now there's more there. So all they did was duplicate some more coins and then... Um, just image project them on the new one. So if you get something like this that's clipping through, what we can do, we can have it delete it straight away, but that will affect the other rotation of the other objects you had. So we can just select here for the render visibility, and there we go. Yeah, and there you go. So I hope this tutorial helped. If it did, make sure you give it a like. And uh, make sure you also subscribe for future videos and tutorials. Should be every Saturday or Sunday, once a week. So yeah, hopefully thanks uh, thanks for watching.